As production of this R35 series version of the Nissan GTR high performance sports car draws to a close, we couldn't resist a final last drive in this glorious, highly tuned Nismo version. Here you get a real feeling for just how far Nissan has evolved this design since we first saw it way back in 2007. It remains a supercar for the PlayStation generation, but it's still astonishingly accessible and frighteningly quick. Welcome to almost the end of an era. This R35 generation Nissan GTR is one of the industry's longest running super sports cars and though it's nearing the end of its production run, it's still one of the rawest, most authentic and most exciting cars in the segment. Here's the highly tuned Nismo version. It's fast, very fast, as all previous GTR models have been. Motorsport engineering is embedded into the very genes of this car. Tucked away amongst the cane fields of Hokkaido, Japan's North Island, is a test track that is itself a tiny piece of Germany. Signs point to Cologne and there are perfect replicas of Autobahn rest stops. The road surface is Germanic and if you wait a while you might hear the ballistic roar of a turbocharged Porsche 911 flying past at three miles a minute. Creating a supercar to beat Audi, Mercedes and, yes, Porsche, requires nothing less than this kind of attention to detail. And the result, launched back in 2007, was the very first version of this R35 series GTR. Prior to this model's launch, the Japanese brand had bought us Ferrari baiting supercars with GTR badges, but they'd all been called Skylines. The original R32 model of 1989, then the ones we saw in Britain, the R33 launched here in 1997, and the R34 which followed it in 1999. With these cars, Nissan was learning. With this R35 design, which didn't make it to the UK until 2009, the gloves were off. No more Skyline references to cheaper mass market models. This model instead was just badged GTR purpose-built for 200 mile an hour Porsche performance at a fraction of the price. In the years since, the GTR package has been gradually evolved with subtle updates nearly every year, but the same basic recipe has remained based around brutal styling and a rumbling 3.8 litre V6 beneath the bonnet. This car no longer sells at a fraction of Porsche prices. Well, it doesn't in this Nismo form anyway, but in performance per pound terms, what you get here is still pretty impressive. The Nismo model, flagship of the GTR range, was first launched in 2015, and now, as production winds down to its inevitable end, probably sometime in 2023, remaining sales are based around it. Lots of brands claim to offer a race car for the road, but this Nissan really is, as we're about to find out. This car really shouldn't work. It's too big, too heavy and far too complex. Plus, of course, there's the vexing issue of paying supercar money for something with a Nissan badge. But it does. Oh, oh, it does. Press the big red start button and the 3.8 litre hand assembled twin turbo V6 springs into life, accompanied by a rather alarming clatter. It feels like a racetrack refugee. It is. As you discover what's underway, first the figures, uh, 62 miles an hour from rest is barbecued in just 2.8 seconds. 100 miles an hour flashes by in around eight seconds and if you have an airport runway on hand, you'll hit 196 miles an hour before the electronics prevent you from reaching the magic 200 mile an hour mark. If you need a frame of reference, uh, that's roughly the same as a Ferrari 812 Superfast, a car that costs nearly £100,000 more. That gives you some idea as to the scale of Nissan's achievement in creating this car. Under the bonnet, 
that thundering 24 valve V6 here generates 600 horsepower. Quite a change from when we first tested the standard version of this car a decade ago, which put out just uh, 478 horsepower. Now, as then, it drives all four wheels via a dual clutch, six speed, semi automatic gearbox with uh, steering wheel paddles for rifle quick 0.2 second changes. The transmission can uh, adapt itself depending on your mood via this dash mounted toggle switch just in front of the gear lever with the best all out driving options being manual uh, for when you're using the paddles and don't want uh, the car kicking down or better still R or race which lets the engine run to the limiter while firming up the dampers and offering more leeway on the stability control. If you leave it be, the transmission sends 97% of its power to the rear wheels, but within just a tenth of a second, all that can change, up to 30% of torque heading frontwards if you're cornering vigorously, so that there's exactly the right amount uh, remaining to light up the rear wheels and slingshot you forward to the next bend. You can understand why at its original launch, uh, this car embarrassed Porsche by lapping their backyard, Germany's Nordschleife Nürburgring racetrack, faster than a 911 Turbo, costing nearly twice as much. Even when you're not on track, uh, the whole experience is addictive in the extreme. And extreme is a word you keep using with reference to this Nissan. No attempt has been made to refine or culture its sensibilities. If a British Touring Car Championship driver were to lend you his race car for a quick blast up your favourite B road, then this, you feel, is the kind of experience that you'd get. A rigid body structure and race-tuned suspension give confidence building stability through quick lateral transitions and high overall cornering speeds. Providing the grip are sticky 20-inch tyres wrapped in a smart raised machine finished forged aluminium wheels. Apart from this Nismo version's extra power in its latest form, and this will be its last form, it features some subtle tweaks, like spoke Dunlop front tyres and turbochargers taken from the GT3 race car with fewer, thinner vanes. At this level in the GTR range, you also get lighter weight. Uh, this Nismo version tips the scales at 1,703 kilograms, plus revised damping and carbon ceramic brakes. Otherwise, it's pretty much the standard GTR recipe. Sony were involved with this Nissan's original development, but at least the steering isn't games console-like. It's quick-witted and communicative, which is useful on uh, tight twisties when you're away from this Nissan's natural habitat of fast flowing roads. The Brembo brakes are suitably awesome too, stopping this still rather heavy hot rod in just 40.9 meters from 70 miles an hour. In recent years, Nissan has added a special brake booster, which increases the initial braking response by engaging with less pedal stroke, resulting in enhanced stopping power and feel. The ride isn't actually as stiff as I was expecting, and you can tailor its tautness via this dash-mounted switch. There's another button to alter stability and traction settings too. You'd be well advised though to decide on uh, your various drive selections before uh, really starting to flex your right foot because once you do your eyes are going to need to be glued on the road ahead if you're to stay out of the hedge and or on the right side of the local magistrate and that's in the dry. And refinement? Well you can hear can't you? Uh, the thundering engine certainly makes its presence felt but not to the point where you'd be shy to take this car on a cross-continental journey but that would be a waste of its talents. It's a supercar accessible to almost anyone, yet rewarding enough for the most demanding enthusiast. It's still an astonishing achievement. There's nothing subtle about this shape. Clearly not Italian, German or American, in every way the definitive Japanese supercar for the Xbox generation. It's an interesting approach given that Nissan started here with a clean sheet of paper. 
This was the very first GTR not based on a mass market vehicle. The muscular body structure with its perfect 50-50 weight distribution drapes a body structure variously made up of carbon fiber, aluminium and steel that's slipperier than you might think. The 0.27 CD drag factor matching that of a sleek Toyota Prius. It might not be pretty but purposeful, oh yes. Just watch the dawdlers scuttle out of your way. I mentioned carbon fibre. For the money being asked here, you'd probably want that embellishing the bodywork, creating the kind of look that premium supercar rivals charge extra for. And sure enough, that's what you get. Carbon fibre features for the roof, for the air scoops in the bonnet, and for this deep front spoiler, which features red-themed air intakes either side of this lower grille. The upper grille is flanked by LED headlamps. There's more carbon fiber on this huge rear wing and on this elaborate deep diffuser with its huge twin tailpipes each side. Distinctive four ring LED tail lights add a finishing touch. The profile perspective is dominated by these huge black diamond turned 20 inch raised forged wheels which feature yellow Brembo carbon ceramic rotors and calipers and are clad with Dunlop SP Sportmax GT600 ultra high performance run flat tyres with rubber curated to a Nismo specific compound. Red trimmed carbon fibre lower side sills slash like GTR slots on the front wings uh, vents over the front wheel arches and black mirrors complete the effect. Let's open the frameless door and take a look in the cabin. Inside, as you'd expect, there's a very driver orientated environment and there's more carbon fiber around the center console and even in the instrument binnacle where the big rev counter dominates the conventional dial layout near to a speedometer rather gloriously calibrated up to 220 miles an hour. You sit comfortably on red trimmed race style Recaro bucket seats and there's uh, red stitched red leather for the uh, gear stick and for the door pulls with further red stitching for the meaty three spoke sports steering wheel. That wheel has a classic red 12 o'clock marker and there's Alcantara stitched fascia top plus a high performance Bose audio system. You'll need to spend ages with the handbook while you figure out all the various buttons and switches, but once familiarity dawns, it all works well enough, and these sports seats are brilliantly supportive, adjusting amply like the steering wheel for both reach and rake. Not so impressive is the old fashioned center stack screen, which has dated graphics and can also be operated by this rather aftermarket looking lower controller. The rear offers seats that even Nissan admits are best left to kids. With the front chair set normally, there's virtually no leg space at all. And those adults banished to the rear will be virtually clamped into place by the rear screen above their heads. Your head is just behind this um, Alcantara roof liner. Still, there's more space back here than you get in a 911. And you get a cup holder between the seats. Uh, uh, cutouts for your knees in these carbon fibre seat backs, uh, recesses for your elbows in the side walls, these pothole style windows and even um, little uh, coat hooks on each side. And more trunk room too, the 315 litres on offer being nearly three times as much as that Porsche. It's a deep boot as well which makes up for the very high lip you have to lump your stuff over. There are even six tie down points and there's carbon fiber style trimming for the inner part of the boot lid. Unfortunately though, you can't extend the space available by folding the rear backrest. This Nismo version of the DTR will cost you just over 180,000 pounds which will sound an awful lot if you expected an asking figure around £100,000 less than that. But then this is the ultimate GTR, and in many respects the last car of its kind. A Porsche 911 Turbo S 
retailed at around £160,000 at the time of this test in summer 2021. But spec one of those up to GTR Nismo levels and the asking price probably wouldn't be a lot different. A McLaren Artura offers similar performance for only a fraction more money, but it isn't as practical as a GTR. With all of these cars, you're getting the kind of performance you'd have to pay nearly £100,000 more for with a Ferrari 812 Superfast or a Lamborghini Huracan STO. Now more than ever, this GTR deserves its poor man's Bugatti Veyron tag. You get plenty of kit for the money too. All these carbon fibre bodywork add-ons come included for £180,000. All these models' rivals will charge you richly for that sort of thing. And Nissan also includes these big 20-inch wheels and carbon ceramic brakes too, another item usually a pricey extra. You also get Recaro front seats, carbon fibre interior trim, a rear view camera, cruise control and automatic climate control. But not much in terms of camera safety kit. Well, not anything really. Here, this car really shows its age. Although the Nissan GTR has been hailed as the performance bargain of the decade, don't let that fool you into thinking it's remotely affordable to run for anyone with a normal salary. Everything about the car is big money, especially in this top Nismo form. It munches consumables at a prodigious rate, chewing through tyres and clutches with abandon if used in anger. Fuel economy, rated at 19.7 miles to the gallon for this latest model, is still pretty eye-watering too, as is the 16 gram per kilometre CO2 reading, and residual values are no longer the unimpeachable proposition they once were. Tire wear will be high and specialist servicing is also likely to be needed, necessary every 6,000 miles. At least there's a three year 60,000 mile warranty. Insurance is a full house group 50 and many insurers will load premiums when they hear those three magic letters. Although ongoing costs may be steep, Few owners will regret their purchase because the GTR is something very special. It's a vehicle that carries a weight of personality well beyond its price level. You buy a GTR for what it can do, not for what it represents. And in this Nismo form, this 600 horsepower monster of a supercar does incredible things. Other exotic brands promise this, but often require Formula One style driving skill to realize the potential on offer. In contrast, this Nissan is accessible to almost all with an empty road, a racetrack and a petrol fueled personnel. There will be those who decry the GTR as a one trick pony, a vehicle that can shine on a lap of the Nürburgring, but which possesses an otherwise narrow band of talent, even in this highly evolved Nismo guys. But those who doubt this Nissan are usually those who have never properly driven one. This GTR is a car that more than ever appears to blend the laws of physics to its own will, defying conventional measures of power to weight and generating traction where none apparently exists. In short, this remains an exhilarating redefinition of what supercar motoring should be, still priced almost within reach of those who really, really want one. Drive one and you really, really will. Let the badge snob sneer. Germany has its Porsche 911, the US has the Corvette, but in the GTR, Japan has its own performance legend.